viruses and bacteria. We talked about transcription and translation, and now we're going to be talking about, we're gonna move on to a new topic, which is gonna be regulation of gene expression in bacteria, okay? But in order to do that, let's quickly recap what we've discussed briefly. Remember that DNA is utilized to make a strand of mRNA, which then in turn is utilized to make a protein, protein X, right? And that could be an enzyme, it could be a structural protein, etc. So the process of taking that, pro that DNA and making an mRNA strand, what is that step referred to as? Do you guys remember that? Transcription? transcription. Yes, transcription, very good. So that's transcription. So by default, the other step would be translation, right? Okay, so that would be translation. Now, our focus today will be this step here, transcription. Recall, just as a recap, this is the picture that I showed you earlier of that um, RNA polymerase, the enzyme that actually pries open the DNA to utilize one side as a template strand and then it's able to assemble RNA nucleotides, okay? And in doing so, it's gonna make this mRNA strand, all right? Now, recall also that the direction of transcription takes place from three prime to five prime, and that for every adenine that we have in DNA, a uracil base will be utilized instead of a thymine, okay? So remember that. Do you have any questions on what we covered? You okay? All right, awesome. All right, so on to the topic at hand, regulation of gen genetic expression. So let me ask you this. Do bacteria depend on their environment? If it's too hot, can a bacterium just go ahead into a vehicle and go to an environment that is different from that, the one that it was in? Or can bacteria just selectively decide to call upon a little thing and go ahead and be taken to an environment where there's more food available. Can bacteria do that? No. no. So do they depend on their environment? Yes. yes. Yes, they do. They depend on their environment. So thinking about their size and, and logic here, do bacteria express every single gene that they have in their circular DNA 24-7 all the time? Think about their size. Do you think they, they're going to constantly be making all of their all of the en all of the enzymes and proteins that they have, every single one. No. no, they don't. They don't. Hence regulation, right? They can regulate at the at the level of transcription and translation. But we're going to be focusing on transcription. Okay. Now, terms that you need to be aware of are the following: constitutive genes. Those are genes that are constantly being expressed because bacteria need it all the time. One example are the enzymes that bacteria use for the process of glycolysis. Well, remember, they utilize that molecule of glucose, that sugar, and what do you get out of that molecule? You get energy. energy. You get energy out of that, right? So for the process of glycolysis. So it's important to always be expressing those proteins, all right? But then there are other genes that are transcribed and translated only when they're needed. But why is that? So now we have to think about, does it take energy to make a protein? Do you think does it take any effort, any work to make a protein? What do you guys think? Yes. It does, it does take, take energy. So think about how small, protein, how small bacteria really are. They're tiny, right? So what can they say if they don't make, if they only, they're selective about making proteins? They can conserve energy. They can conserve energy, exactly, very good. And they do this, they actually do. And um, they can do this by making these molecules called quorum sensing molecules. That sounds kind of creepy, doesn't it? So these molecules are actually used like a radar in a sense. And through those molecules, the bacteria can sense what's in their environment. And that allows them to decide what Inside, what proteins they need to synthesize, which one specifically they need to synthesize to make. So in a sense, they're regulating the production of proteins. One example is Pseudomonas aeruginosa in individuals that have burned. And so what Pseudomonas aeruginosa does is that it senses, once it's made this quorum sensing 
molecules, it senses its environment. And one notices that it has a lot of them there, a lot of other bacteria like itself, then and only then it will start making those harmful proteins in order to affect us, in order to hurt us. And that's awesome, isn't it? It's great that pseudomonasary genomes that can do that for them, but not for us, right? But that's really cool that it can do that. So, the other term that you need to be aware of are repressors. Repressors repress, okay? So, repressors are regulator proteins. Now, what they do in a sense is that they block RNA polymerase. So, in a sense, they're stopping RNA polymerase. They block it completely. And so, they stop transcription, okay? So, that gene that would be otherwise be expressed is not going to be expressed and in a sense, they are actually regulating protein synthesis. Now, this right here, go to figure 7.2 in your textbook, please. Uh, this is what an operon is. We're going to be talking about lac operon specifically, but I'm going to give you an idea of what an operon is. An operon, here as you can see, this is a segment of a template of DNA strand, just one side. An operon is simply um, made up of a promoter. A promoter is a specific sequence of, I mean, of a nucleotide that are here. Then it's composed of genes. In this case, we have four genes and it's made up of an operator. Now, the operator is the controlling regulatory element and you'll soon see why that is the case. Now, the regulatory gene, we're going to talk about the regulatory gene in a minute or so. Okay? Any questions so far? Now, regulation of genetic expression. We're talking about bacterial cells, right? So, we're going to be using, they use operon. What in the heck is an operon? Well, there are different types. There are inducible operons that are actually activated by inducers, okay? And, but they're only activated when they are needed. The classic one is lactose operon. And that's the one we'll talk about today, all right? Another one is actually, another one is a repressible operon. Repressible operons are constantly being produced. Um, they're, always, uh, they're always active, they're constantly being on in a sense. So they're transcribed and translated all the time, but they're gonna be deactivated by repressors, all right? One example is the tryptophan operon, okay? So here's the lac operon when it's being repressed. When it's being repressed, when it's going to be repressed, when glucose is present, okay? <clears throat> now, here's the template of DNA, the DNA strand. There's your lac operon, your promoter, right, right there, the operator, and the genes that make up this lac operon. There are three genes here. Um, specifically, they are permease, beta-galactosidase, and transacetylase. Okay, and all of those three particular en uh, enzymes that are produced usually break down lactose, but there's no lactose here, there's glucose present, okay? So, the other component would be this promoter and regulatory gene, which is doing, what it's doing is actually transcribing that gene to transcribe that repressor mRNA, which in turn is going to be translated into the good guy, which is the repressor, okay? So the repressor is physically going to attach to the promoter region of the lac operon and block that RNA polymerase from moving forward and carrying out transcription. So RNA polymerase cannot bind because the, the area is already occupied, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so the lac operon is an inducible operon. Why is it an inducible operon? It is because it can be induced. Here's your template of DNA strand. Here's your repressor mRNA. Here is your regular your repressor that is being expressed. That's been expressed. But now, because lactose is present, um, you're going to have a form of lactose, allolactose, actually physically attached to the repressor. The repressor, therefore, is going to be uh, inactivated and it's not going to be able to attach to the promoter region. And guess what's going to happen? It's not going to block. RNA polymerase, and RNA polymerase is going to be able to make that protein molecule, that protein mo that uh, mRNA. So it's going to make those three, express those genes, it's going to transcribe them, and in turn they'll be able to be translated, right? 
So, does this make sense so far? Does anybody have any questions? Yes. But I didn't tell you the whole story, okay? Um, I didn't tell you the whole story. Oh, you can stop it now.